members here. So here are five awesome tips to help you be more successful on your next mule deer rut hunt. All right, tip number one, get away from the crowds. This one seems overly simple. And yes, you can kill deer anywhere. I'm not saying do something crazy and go hike away in the backcountry in a November rut hunt, but get away from people. If you see people hunting certain areas and you wanna to try to target a big mature buck, well, try to figure out other ways to hunt around those people so you're not directly competing with them. One of the biggest things that people are doing is hunting from roads in the late season, which can be really great. One of these tips later on is gonna talk about that tactic, so it is a pretty decent one, but get away from that pressure. Get out, find areas where other people aren't hunting, find other angles other people aren't hunting. Uh, just find other things that other people aren't doing when you're on a mule deer hunt during the rut because everyone's kind of doing the same thing. So I always say, if you do what 95% of the hunters do, you'll have success like 95% of the hunters do. A lot of people don't take animals. So if you want to take a true trophy buck that probably 5% of hunters or less take, you have to start thinking outside the box, especially on a mule deer rut hunt. So don't get discouraged by hunters. Use them sometimes to your advantage. Figure out where they're kind of glassing from. Try to work other different angles around, like I said, and just try to think differently how you can approach the terrain, how to figure out you know, how to put the pieces of the puzzle together by figuring out where other, where other hunters are and where you should hunt. Don't get discouraged. All right, tip number two, love is in the air. So November, all about the mule deer rut like we're talking about right now. So one of the biggest tactics I like to use when hunting the rut for mule deer is find the does, find the bucks. So you can't just blanket statement this and be like, all right, I see a bunch of does out in the open. There's no buck out in the open. There's no buck there. That's the wrong approach to go through. If you see a bunch of does, look in the terrain around where those does are at. A lot of times these bigger bucks are gonna be hanging out outside that big doe group. They're gonna be waiting up on, you know, either a hillside, a mountain, and some trees or whatever. All these does are out in the open and you're glassing them. There might be small bucks in that area with the does, but sometimes these bigger bucks are kind of hanging off to the sides until it's actually like peak, peak rut. So don't be afraid to glass doe groups, look in the vicinity trying to find those does, and then check out other areas. A lot of times I've seen bucks run into a bunch of doe groups, wasn't a hot doe, that buck just keeps cruising. He'll move like multiple miles in one day. Sometimes I've seen him move up to five miles in a night. Uh, I actually killed the buck the next day that I'm talking about and moved a long distance. Uh, so just don't be afraid to move to check out other doe groups and then come back again days later to check out those same doe groups, see if a new buck showed up, see if a bigger buck showed up. Maybe people are hunting that area and that big buck knew there was hunting pressure so he didn't come into those does. So, so another key point for finding the does, finding the bucks is literally hunting all day. Literally hunt from sunrise to sunset. During the rut, there is no time for you to go back to camp, make some coffee, make some breakfast, do whatever you have to do, go to a restaurant. You can't do that. You have to be hunting literally all day. If you want to kill some big mature bucks in the rut, you have a pretty good tag. If it's a rut hunt, you should be literally hunting all, all day. You only have a short amount of time to hunt, short amount of vacation days, maximize every single second of daylight, and hunt all day to try to find a big buck up on its feet during the rut. Tip number three, one of my favorite ones, optics are king in the rut. So you're gonna be glassing. You're gonna be glassing in some very uncomfortable situations, usually late season rut hunts. You got weather, you got snow, you got wind. You might be having to glass into the wind because some of these bucks and does are gonna be on you know, a hillside away from the wind. So you have to glass into the wind to try to find them. Uh, another big tip with uh, optics is angles. Like I mentioned before, you're gonna to wanna to be moving around, glassing everything from multiple different angles, trying to find these bucks. Whether it's sagebrush country, aspens, pinion juniper, angles are gonna be king because you want to be able to see exactly where those bucks might be bedded near said does, or just trying to locate a buck that's cruising around. So don't be afraid to get up and move around in a hiking area and just really glass in all that dark timber. Use your binos in the morning, middle of the day, start busting out a spawning scope. I love using a spawning scope middle of the day, glassing all these shadow pockets, even during the rut, trying to pick apart you know, all the terrain, trying to find a buck that might have just been rutting all night, exhausted, now he's bedded down. So use optics to your advantage on a late season hunt. Find all those big glassing knobs. A lot of times remember that a glassing spot for mule, there doesn't have to be a giant glassing knob. It doesn't have to be this master glassing point where you could see 365 degrees. It could be just a little small pocket you're glassing, a little small area in the timber with maybe some snow. Move around, try to find small areas where you can glass that are, look very productive for holding a deer. What do deer need this time of year? Well, the does need feed and bucks need the does. So you start putting that little piece together, 
winter glassing, trying to find productive glassing areas that you can just glass lots of country, but also areas that you can glass really tight little pockets. A lot of people overlook those little tight pockets when it comes to glassing late season. I think those are the ones that uh, actually hold some bigger mature deer. Tip number four, cover country. So like I said before, don't be afraid to, you know, get away from the roads, but in this case, you might want to use the road system. You might literally want to get in a vehicle, depending on the state you're in, the terrain, if it's an area that's conductive to riding around in a glass from a vehicle, by all means, late season hunt is a great tactic. If you do get on a side-by-side -side and run around, well, you got to realize there's other people that are going to be doing it, so you might want to incorporate other tactics in how you're glassing. Maybe it's glassing longer distances, maybe it's just finding areas that you can glass you know, across little tiny slivers of public with private all around it that other people are going to overlook but just cover country. There's so many times when uh, I've hunted some of these states where we're literally burning gas tanks after gas tanks during the day, just running around trying to find bucks because they're either already shot before we get there or already disturbed and we can't see them. So we're just not gonna waste a bunch of time hunting and there's no deer or no big bucks and we're just covering country. A lot of times this is that like open country stuff where you can see a lot, just driving around, looking for new areas, looking for new areas to glass, to cover as much country as you can during the whole entire day especially that middle part of the day, like the last tip of what I was saying, hunt all day long. Middle of the day, start driving around, start covering different areas, start covering things that don't look like it might even hold a deer. Like I said, those little hidden small pockets that are near a road that people just drive by all the time because they want to go further in the mountains. I love going further and deeper, but sometimes those pockets next to a road, people just drive by all the time and overlook. Maybe it's worth parking and hiking up a little knob just to check out something that's, you know, quarter mile from a road. So cover country in the late season, probably end up finding a buck eventually that you want to take. Tip number five is all about, it's a little different one, it's all about being mentally tough. So late season mule deer hunts in the rut, while it seems like, yeah, they should be everywhere, you know, people always say mule deer are stupid in the rut, they're not. It's, it's hard to find big giant deer in the rut because they know when to show up in daylight and when to be, you know, hanging out in the timber. So being mentally tough glassing, being mentally tough with your gear, knowing you have the right gear to sit in that snowstorm all day, that's where that mental tough toughness is going to pay off because you're putting in the work, you're hunting all day, you're going to get drained every single day, you're going to get tired, but keep pushing through it every single day, try new tactics, think outside the box, like I said, use all these other tactics in combination with each other, but be mentally tough every single day to know that any second it could happen. You could find a glimpse of that buck and boom, it's on and an hour later you have a buck on the ground. So just be diligent all day long to stay in the game, don't get discouraged, don't let other hunters discourage you. Don't let other elk hunters in the area discourage you. A lot of times these late season hunts, there's elk hunts going on at the same time as mule deer hunts. So be prepared just to understand there will be people out there, but if you did your homework, you're in the right area, you're seeing deer, to keep digging the country apart and try to find a buck. So stay mentally tough every single second on your hunt. So that was a quick run through, five mule deer tips for hunting the rut. So a lot of them seem pretty simple, but when we start to dive in, there's actually really complexities to all those tips, but just you know, go out there, have fun, utilize some of these tactics. And like I said, mule deer hunting is all about glassing, covering country, checking out doe groups, staying mentally strong, and using your optics to the best of your ability. So if you have any questions, comments, always drop them down below. Happy to get back to you guys. And if you have mule deer tags in the rut, understand that this is the best time of year. It's way better than September. September's fun and all for a lot of people, but this is the best time of year. So enjoy it to its fullest because some of these mule deer tags in the rut are pretty coveted. So best of luck. Catch you next time. Thank you.